Hey guys, welcome to episode one of a brand new FIFA 21 career mode. This is a Chelsea mini series here on, as you can tell in the top corner, the early version of the game. So not everything you see here is going to be final. Obviously the ratings are completely different. It's last year's ratings. The kits are last year's kits, everything like that aesthetically and player ratings wise, etc. will be updated for the full version, of course, when it launches. This video and all of the subsequent videos from the early capture session are brought to you by the EA Game Changers program. This is going to be the first of a number of videos I've got for you. We're going to be obviously doing a mini series here with Chelsea. I'll try and get a full season recorded if I can over the next few days. I also have a number of other videos coming to you over the course of the next few days. Uh, to start with, there'll be this one at I think 6pm on Tuesday, if not 8pm on Tuesday, one of the two. Uh, I may upload another one tonight as well. There are, of course, a number of new mechanics in career mode this year. Player development plans, training is completely different. There's the interactive match sim, and we've got player position training as well. I've got an individual video on each of those new mechanics going live over the next couple of days. So keep your eyes peeled for those on the channel, of course, as ever. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and tick that notification bell so you don't miss an upload because there's plenty to come from FIFA 21 career mode, and I don't want you to miss any of it. I've got another couple of videos as well, a couple of experiments and uh, kind of a look at the new competitor mode as well. So we're doing that over the course of the next few days, but the mainstay, every single day, there will be a Chelsea mini-series career mode video as I work my way through this first season. And uh, I won't go too in-depth on the new mechanics individually in this save. I'll leave the explanations of those mechanics for those individual videos. So do check those out when they come out. There might be one later on today. And then there'll be one, at least one a day moving forward. There'll be at least one video a day, this Chelsea mini series, and certainly for the, the next five or six days at least, there'll be two videos a day, if not more, over the next few days as we uh, we ramp up towards full launch, which of course is October the 7th, I think, first week of October. Of course, we'll get early access via EA Access or EA Play, as it's now known, still exactly the same, 10 hours uh, a few days early, 10 hours worth of gameplay a few days early. So we'll crack on and we'll start with this Chelsea career mode. Now, because it's the uh, last year's ratings, because the squad database isn't up to date, I don't have all of Chelsea's new signings currently at the club, which makes things actually more straightforward for me right now because, of course, I can't wait for you guys to give me feedback for a transfer window because I'm having to record this before you see it, and by the time you see it, I don't have access to the build anymore. So, I know exactly what I need to do in the transfer window. What I need to do is sign Kai Havertz, Thiago Silva, and Ben Chilwell, because we already have Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech at the club with this squad update. Weirdly, Malang Saar just isn't in this version of the game. He isn't in this database. Obviously, he will be at launch, so don't worry. Uh, there's nothing to worry about there. I will have a Premier League budgets video coming out uh, over the next couple of days as well. Here at Chelsea, we currently have £73 million available to us with nearly £600,000 available in the wage budget. Now, Kai Havertz is valued at £85 million. So I need to raise some funds if I'm to be able to buy him. Thiago Silva was not that expensive. Ben Chilwell, as of yet, don't know how expensive he is. I've currently got my scouts out looking at him. Uh, let's see, before I back out of there, what I did want to show you is that I have got a number of players transfer listed. Willian, of course, has left the club in real life and will be at Arsenal when you start a career mode on FIFA 21, the full game. In this build, he's still here, so I'm going to sell him. At least it offers me the opportunity to raise some extra funds. Also looking to sell Danny Drinkwater and Marcus Alonso. He's just not a player that I get on with. Uh, Michi Batshuayi is also on the transfer list. He's gone to Palace in real life, of course. And then I have a number of players on the loan list as well. Of course, because we aren't going to get any further than at most one season into this save, I'm not going to put much emphasis on the Youth Academy at all because there'd be no point. But of course, on full launch with my first full series at Everton... I will be doing exactly that and putting some focus on the Youth Academy. I'll quickly show you the Youth Academy because, especially <clears throat> if you start or if you buy the version of the game, I think it's the Champions Edition, you get, well, rather than having an empty Youth Academy at the beginning of the game, you have a, game, a, um, a Youth Academy already set up with a handful, three, four, maybe five, youth players already at the club. One of which, if you're get the Champions Editions, one of which will always be a Scout Future Star level player. You can no longer buy a Scout Future Star via the catalogue. There is no catalogue. 
You can't buy a financial takeover from the catalogue. There is no catalogue. If you want a financial takeover, you have to do it season one when you're setting up the game. And you can select whether you want 10 million, 50, 100 and 500 million are the options you've got at the minute. And you have to do that at the very beginning of a new save. I obviously haven't done that here at Chelsea. I don't need the money. It's not something I'm interested in getting a financial takeover. But you can see here we have a Croatian goalkeeper. We have a Spanish goalkeeper. Both have very, very good potentials. We also have Alexander Mortensen, who has 60 to 82 potential, which isn't amazing. But certainly these two goalkeepers could grow well if we were to invest in the youth. You see, you can select their development plans even when they're in the youth setup, which is good. And obviously, as I say, I'm going to go into uh, more depth with these uh, development plans in a separate video. So do keep your eye out for that for the time being. I'm just going to leave everybody unbalanced. And I'm going to do that uh, in the main 11 as well. Because we're not going to get far enough in this save to really warrant trying to channel someone to be able to play a certain way. I'm not going to have the length of time with this particular build of the game for that to really take much effect. So... It's quite simply going to be kind of an old school career mode here for this mini series. But when the full version is out with that Everton save, we will delve right in with all of the new mechanics and get properly stuck in. So I'm going to start by uh, just training and advancing through and playing the or simming the uh, the pre-season games. We have uh, Stad René, Atletico, oh, sorry, Athletic Club de Bilbao and uh, Rassen Sport Leipzig in our pre-season game. Of course, you see here this looks different. The calendar, there are uh, training options before match, after match, weekly plan. Again, we'll go in depth with that in a separate video. So keep your eyes peeled for that over the next couple of days. You'll have seen something about it previously, either a video on my channel or someone else's channel. For now, I'm leaving my uh, schedule rules as before match is a rest day, after match is a recovery day, and then I've got intermittent training in between. So like I say, in this little mini series, I'm not going to delve too much into training. I'm not going to delve too much into uh, the youth setup. I'm not really going to be looking to change anyone's positions. But at, in the full series at Everton, we will do that. And so that you get an idea of what those mechanics are like, I have got a separate video on each of them, as I say, coming up over the next few days. So uh, what I'll do actually whilst I'm still in this opening highlight, apologies if this is a little bit rambly at the beginning, but it's the first video you're seeing from all of this capture uh, content. So... I uh, wanted to make sure that I kind of got everything across to you at the beginning. Do drop the video a like if you're looking forward to FIFA 21 and content on this channel. And please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any content here on the channel. I can't guarantee Marcus Alonso games. Obviously, I'm going to be looking to bring Ben Chilwell in. And for the youngsters that are going out on loan, it's good that they agree with me that they want to go out on loan. And rather kindly, Cesar Aspetacueta is telling me that uh, I'm very welcome which is great. I'm excited for the future here, even though it is going to be a pretty short-term future here at Chelsea in this first season. So let me just try and sign someone then already in this opening uh, in this opening segment. Let's go for, I can't afford Kai Havertz yet, or do I prioritise Kai Havertz uh, and try and raise some extra funds? Mm, no, because we've got Hakim Ziyech. I'll, I'll go for Thiago Silva. Chelsea, to be fair, are more desperate for a, for a centre-back than they are uh, forward players. Kai Havertz is kind of more of an opportunistic signing for Chelsea in real life, having already gotten Kai Haver um, having already gotten Hakim Ziyech and Timo Werner. But uh, I'm not sure that the flat cap really suits me, but I haven't done any customization on my manager. So we will offer a transfer fee and we will offer a transfer fee of like 15 million. I don't want to go overboard here for Thiago Silva. He is 35 years of age. And hopefully they'll not want too much more. And indeed they don't. So I'm quite happy to accept that. Thiago Silva is coming to the club. Provided we can agree a contract deal with him. He's currently on only £86,000 a week. Which at Paris Saint-Germain is probably a minuscule wage to be completely honest. But you never know. He may even be open to a... Uh, may even be open to a, a wage cut. He wants crucial. That's fine. I will start him alongside uh, probably Tony Rudiger. There isn't really a number of options at Chelsea at centre-back, is there? Not world-class options anyway, not league-winning options. Uh, quite happy with no release clause, and hopefully gives me an idea of what he wants wage-wise. Doesn't look like he's going to, but I'll see if he'll take a wage cut. We'll offer him 75000 or 76 because they don't want to stop there. And £800,000 a week, 
Oh, sorry, 800,000 pounds signing bonus. And he'll agree that. Great. So Thiago Silva is in. I'm going to wait for the scout report on Ben Chilwell, but I am going to throw Thiago Silva straight into this starting lineup to start alongside Tony Rudiger. And we'll crack on from there then. Again, to reiterate, those ratings are not final. These ratings are the ratings that started on uh, on FIFA 20. So it's actually a really old database. But for the time being, we're going to crack on. We'll just quickly simulate our way through uh, training again. And then we'll uh, show you actually the interactive maxim. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not actually going to to go in too in depth into how it works, the mechanics of it, etc. I'll show you the interactive match sim here now whilst we're going along. I might as well. Uh, so <laughs> apologies again, this is like a really long opening highlight, but fingers crossed you're enjoying what you're seeing so far. So we'll sim it, and this is what the interactive match sim looks like. And like I say, I'll go into it in a bit more detail in a separate video, but you can hear there is commentary going on and we can see how the team are gonna play. Now, ordinarily in my saves, I play three games a month and sim the rest. And I'm leaning towards still doing that. But in the simmed games, obviously, we will do this interactive sim. And I will be able to uh, make changes on the fly in my own team management changes, my own substitutions, change my own game plans, which previously, obviously, you couldn't do. But I don't think I'm going to utilize the jump in feature too much in my own saves. If you would like to see me utilize the jump in feature, then do let me know. And once the Everton save starts, I will use it. It's obviously a brand new feature and I I'm, I need to know from you guys how you would like to see me utilize these new mechanics as best possible for your own entertainment for saves. But what a start. Timo Werner gives us the first goal of the game. Off to a wonderful start. 1-0 to Chelsea. That's superb. We'll uh, have a quick look at racing. So he's 7.3 so far, Timo Werner. Certainly playing the best of anyone else on the pitch. Stats-wise, we've had a lot of the ball and the only chances. And game plan-wise, 1-4-3-3 attack by default. I haven't really changed the uh, tactics too much other than change the formation and uh, and just put the, the players in that I want to start. I haven't changed my offensive style or defensive style etc obviously at Everton I will do this is just kind of going to be uh, oh we've scored again <laughs> no it was offside uh, this is just going to be a look at career mode in its uh, base form I'm not going to go too in depth on this obviously like I say at Everton we will do but for this little mini series I just want to give you a taste of what's to come on the channel in a, its base form in its simplest form and then we'll go in more detail when it's actually going to matter in a save that's going to be multiple seasons but Ren have equalised there and it's not been the most convincing of first halves from us. We have had multiple chances, multiple shots, but as of yet, still only drawing. That's a lovely Maisie run, and we have scored a second. That was a brilliant run. I'm actually going to jump in there, and can we have a look at... Oh, we can't have a look at a replay, unfortunately. That's annoying, but you can just jump back to the sim option here. That was a lovely little Maisie run. I'm not, I think it was Christian Pulisic that went on it. Uh, you can tell who it was by the... Uh, oh no, it's Team of Earth. It was number 21, wasn't it? So, do I make any changes at halftime? That's the question. I don't think I need to. So, we'll uh, we'll just resume and we'll keep going. And uh, we'll see if anything comes to you. Like I say, during these interactive match sim parts, I probably won't commentate on all of the game in future. This is just because it's the first one. Moving forward, I will probably just cut little highlights together when there's something that's actually happening on the field. And then from there... It will be more of an edited an edited piece of content. It's a lovely ball through. Can Timo Werner get another? Looking to play uh, William around the corner, but unfortunately couldn't. So that's the way the things are going to work. Lucy, this has been uh, a long 15-odd <laughs> minute intro to a series. So I apologise that it has been a bit waffly, but not all the content is like this. I, I uh, assure you it will be much more edited and snappy and free-flowing. But for, for this first video, I wanted to just kind of get that initial splurge of information to you for what's coming over the next few days. And Ren have equalised here, so I'm actually going to make a change. Uh, we'll dismiss that. I'm going to go to my team management, and I am going to make a change to try and freshen things up here. Kovacic is going to come off, and I'm going to put Jorginho in. And uh, I'll also... Um, what I might do, actually, is put Mason Mount in for Willian, and then move Ziyech out wide, and we'll try Ziyech in that wide position to see what he's like out there. And uh, we'll bring Reese James in for Aspi to give myself a little bit more pace at wing back. And we'll see if we can get ourselves uh, back into this game. It's 2 2 in the 65th minute. And moving forward, I probably will just 
cut and start to edit this footage a little bit more so than I have done to this point. So 2-2 two -two in the 69th minute and we'll see how this one ends up. 3-2 Ren. Simple through ball and Niang buries it into the back of the net. Looks like we might be losing our first pre-season friendly here. 3-2. It's been a hell of a game, isn't it? 3-2. I was slightly concerned that with the interactive match sim, we wouldn't see many, many highlights or many goals. But certainly, this quells any of those worries, doesn't it? There's still plenty going on in these interactive match sim games. And still just as active and entertaining and action filled as they would have been in the old simulating function nice little link up play between Ziek and Reese James there and they're working this about really nicely and Kante's buried it and we have ourselves a third so we're back in the game that was very well put together you can tell from my uh, game plan I'm set to possession and obviously that was very well put together with some good flowing possession Timo Werner's played straight through and it's four we're gonna win oh what a start what a start to the season. Jeeps, 4-3 in the 91st minute with the last kick of the game. We do win our first preseason game. Well, if every game is like that, it's going to be a hell of a mini-series, isn't it? I had a transfer from Benfica for Ross Barkley. Now, he's not in my current first team plans, but I will reject it for now. If I do need to raise some extra funds at the end of this transfer window to ensure we can get Kai and Ben Chilwell in, then I will do that. But we're going to sim this game then against Athletic Bilbao as well. And uh, again, if there's highlights to bring to you, I will do. But we'll start to edit the, the footage a little bit more heavily now. Bilbao coming through the middle. Looking to get free. Good tackle by Thiago Silva. Certainly having an impact in the starting lineup. No real chances yet in the game. They could play, find a way through. No, I'll tell you what, Thiago Silva is playing out of his skin at centre-back. Really pleased with the way that he's been marshalling the defence so far. You've got options, Ngolo. There we go. One of those options is Hakim Ziyech. And we have ourselves a 1-0 lead in the 22nd minute. Defensive solidity at the back. A counter-attack at pace. And a good finish. We'll take ourselves a 1-0 lead. Thank you very much. Oh, that's some good, that's some good players. Some really good players. A great equaliser. That was really well worked. Some quick fire passing. Some good movement. An athletic club. A back level not long after going behind. Never mind. We're two on up. Ziek gets another one. Fairly simple that time. Just the three ball through the middle. And buried into the back of the net. 2-1. Lots of goals in this preseason tournament so far. Also impressed with our own defending. And lack of ability to keep a clean sheet. But at least we know we can score goals here at Chelsea. It's good football. Oh, he's in. Buried. Hear the dink. I'm not sure if the game audio will be loud enough for you to hear that, but Timo Werner cracks that home, crashing off the post. He's certainly got an electric start to his Chelsea time, as has Hakim Ziyech now with a brace here in this game as well as we approach the hour mark. Again, I think I'm going to lean towards taking uh, Kovacic off just to keep some fresh legs in the middle and to ensure that we hold on to this lead. Everybody starting to... Uh, play well and have extra match sharpness etc although fitness is certainly uh, starting to become an issue but sharpness is dropping for those that are on the bench as you can see so I am going to have to start considering uh, starting to play some of these guys in uh, in games to ensure that their match sharpness doesn't drop so far that they end up losing uh, losing stats same way that you'd uh, you'd lose stats if morale dropped again more in-depth video on that in the tr in kind of a how does training work video uh, later in the week. That's how they'll prop. Oh, oh, he's missed. That's how I think I'll title them as well. How does training work in FIFA 21 career mode? How does the interactive match sim work in FIFA 21 career mode? How do development plans work in FIFA 21 career mode? So do keep your eye out for those in your sub box. But for now, it looks like we're going to get ourselves a uh, a good victory here. And to be fair, I'm so confident that we're going to get the victory. I'm going to jump to result. And it stays as 3-1. So... They got a yellow card in the final few minutes. Two yellow cards, in fact, in the final few minutes. They made a couple of changes. My team made a couple of changes. Christensen coming on for Rudiger, etc. But we get the victory, and that should be us through to the knockout stages of this preseason tournament. Had a loan offer from Montpellier for Ethan Ampadu, but it's a loan with an option to buy. 
So if it were just a loan, I'd look to uh, I'd look to accept that straight off the bat. Because it's a loan to buy, you don't have the option to accept straight off the bat because you have to negotiate the fee for the loan to buy. So I don't have the intention of accepting this, but for the sake of showing you what loan to buys look like, I'll include this in the video and uh, we'll see what it is. So I can propose loan without the buy option. I can propose a loan without a buy option. I don't know if I accept whether it then gives me the option to negotiate the fee. And I don't want to do that just in case it does. Well, no, let's see. Does it? Do you get the chance to uh, negotiate the fee? I imagine so. Uh, there you go. Yeah, so we get the opportunity to uh, accept a one-year loan. The wage split is fine. I'm not bothered about that. His wages are pretty minimal. So what's, what's the fee? 2.2 million. Now, that's what he's valued at. Now, currently, you can't see on this screen what his actual value is. You can see what they've offered you for him, but you can't see what his value is. So they could have offered 2.2 million and he might actually be worth 10, but I can't tell that. I've given that feedback to EA and hopefully they're going to work something in a, in a patch, but I took note and you'll have to do the same. Take note of what that player's value is before you head into this a negotiation screen because you won't be able to tell what his value is so you you won't be able to negotiate the sort of fee that you might be capable of without knowing that information i purposefully bid too high there so that they rejected it so that if i get another one come in i can show you the uh, the other option just propose a transfer fee rather than a loan uh, but again ah final scout report back on ben chilwell that's great news let's simulate our way through training quickly and then we can go and, uh, and have a look at what Ben Chilwell is worth and see if we can get him into the club. Final scout report. He's valued at 23.5 million and at 79 rated. Obviously, again, ratings not final. Uh, there's still plenty of... Uh, well, these are last year's ratings. So, obviously, it will be all updated for next year, as we've mentioned multiple times now. So, let's go into the transfer hub. Let's try and get Ben Chilwell, early, ben Chilwell in if we can. I don't want to pay too much for him. So we'll try and, uh, and get a fee agreed that's fairly minimal so that we can maximise the amount of money we've got available to try and sign um, to try and sign Kai Havertz. Now I'll offer them Marcus Alonso and we'll see if... Uh, oh, propose other exchange player. So I can actually change the exchange player before having uh, committed to submitting it, which is good. Uh, let's submit the offer there. I don't know if you could do that before. I don't think so. I think that's just an, an added option that you think, like, I guess, in case you accidentally select the wrong player. So are they going to accept that? They are interested in Marcus Alonso, but they want an extra £9 million. Let me propose a new transfer fee. I want to minimalise that as best I can. Perhaps £4 million plus Marcus Alonso. It's only just over his uh, val current valuation which is 23 and a half. So maybe maybe 6 million plus Marcus Alonso. That would be a really good deal if we can get this agreed. Come on, agree it with me. Let's not... I don't want to give you a full, a full nine if I can avoid it. Good. Thank you very much, Brendan. Appreciate that very much indeed. What's he currently on a week wage-wise? £59,000. Now, having gotten this deal through, we'll know exactly how much money we need to raise to... Uh, to be able to afford Kai Havertz. Uh, I'll say important. He's going to be my starting left back. So I'll offer him the important squad role. Four year deal is completely fine with me. So we'll accept that. Moving forward. No release clause. And there you go. That's exactly what they want. He was willing to take a wage cut. Let me remove the bonus. And I will give him an extra uh, couple of grand a week. Just to make up for the lack of that bonus. Not that it's going to be massively uh, helpful. But. It's enough to have him sign it. So, Kai Havertz is valued at 85 million and he's on 63,000 pounds a week. I'm going to need probably about 100 million free unless I can use someone as part of that deal to agree to bring him in. So, if I move my wage budget like that, I've got about 70 million. We're not that far away. Sell Willian and we should be able to get Kai Havertz in. So for this next friendly, I'm actually going to rotate the 11 and play with a secondary team. An offer for Danny Drinkwater of 9.5 million from Monaco. I'm just going to accept that straight off the bat. I don't think Danny Drinkwater is going to have a massive amount of interest in him. 
and I'm just quite happy to accept that without risking trying to maximize the offer and, uh, and missing out on it. This one is just a simple loan offer from uh, Vittoria Guimaraes for Ethan Ampadu, which I'm happy to accept. I think v Vittoria Guimaraes are the side that have just signed in real life Ricardo Quaresma. So he'll be a, a great signing for them, you'd imagine. So we'll go in and we'll simulate this game and we'll see if we can get a result in the next game of the preseason tournament. After half an hour, not much has happened in this game so far. And in the, in the interest of keeping this first video shorter, I uh, made the decision that I'm just going to quick sim the remainder of these preseason tournament games uh, so we can get some actual gameplay of the uh, first league games of the season in this video before it becomes massively too long. In the game, in the videos from the full season, the actual competitive season, I will include the the footage from the uh, the other games or the simulated games. Drink water sold. That's good. A transfer from Mason Mount, which we should reject, obviously, from Wolfsburg. So I will adjust my content accordingly moving forward. So we'll uh, we'll quick sim this one against Inter Milan. I'm just keen to see. Oh no, it's Mason Mount coming to talk to me. I uh, know that eventually you're going to be looking for a new attacking midfielder. I think I can do that job for you if you give me the chance. Uh, it'll take some hard work, Mason. It'll take some hard work, but certainly you have the opportunity to uh, continue in the first team. Now, let me change to my higher rated squad. And like I say, I'm going to quick sim so we just get the uh, the result from the game. Unfortunately, losing semi-final here to a goal from Christian Eriksen. So we're out of the pre-season tournament at the semi-final stage. Not to worry. There wasn't a massive amount of money available for us to win there. Interesting email. Juventus have offered to swap Chiellini and £10 million for Azpilicueta. Now, I play Dave as a right back. If I hadn't already gotten Thiago Silva in, I would have accepted that. I would absolutely have accepted that. I can view the exchange player so I can see what his stats are and what he looks like. That's unreal. He may be 35. Dave's not exactly young, but that's an unbelievable offer. Ordinarily, I would accept that straight off the bat, but I don't have any other backups at right back. I could maybe accept to then sell another centre-back to use Chiellini and then fund that for a right back. Maybe I'll do that just for the sake of this mini series. Oh, but that says I was the captain. For the sake of this mini series and showing you the various different mechanics, I will do this. Uh, I'll try and negotiate it a little bit further, but I will look to do this. If, the, if this was my genuine Chelsea save, then I wouldn't do this. And I'd reject because I'd want to keep Azpilicueta at the club. But for the sake of exploring the new mechanics in the game, we're ready to offer you Chiellini and an extra £10 million for Azpilicueta. Um, I could propose another exchange player. Can I choose... Can I choose a right back instead? <gasps> could I get Alexandro? Would you... I mean, prob probably not. Are they willing to let Alexandra go? They're not, but they would be willing to offer me Blaise Matuidi plus thirteen million pounds. I don't need, I don't need another CDM, but I can propose another exchange player. Uh, Mattia De Cilio would be a good right back to have, but I would perhaps like some extra money because he's not as high rated. So I'll ask for uh, Mattia De Cilio and twenty-eight million pounds, and we'll see if they're interested in that. And they are. So, we are going to have a new right back. And it's just a £28 million pounds plus Mattia Di Cilio to come to uh, Chelsea. So, I now have the opportunity to negotiate, presumably, uh, contract terms with Mattia Di Cilio. That's the next step. It said, next step. It said negotiate. So, yeah, we're going to be negotiating contract terms with Mattia to bring him to the club. Uh, quite happy to accept a sporadic role. Can't remember what De Cilio's rating is from a previous from previous years, but he must be about Reese James's level, if not slightly better. We'll disregard the release clause. I don't know what his overall or what his current wages are, so I will offer him fifty grand a week. I might be overpaying. I might not be overpaying. I'd have to I'd have to scout him to know exactly what his uh, his current situation is, but. He's willing to negotiate from there. I'll remove the bonus and we'll see if he'll accept a £53,000 a week. 56, I'm quite happy to accept that. Cesar Azpilicueta, 
will go to Juventus. We will have £28 million added to our transfer budget and Mattia De Cilio will join the club. Well then, provided Azpilicueta can agree contract terms with Juventus, that deal should go through in the not-too-distant future. This is exactly the sort of thing that I wanted to happen in this first episode so you guys could see some of the new mechanics. I know not all of you will have made it through so far or this far in the video to this point, but those of you that have, thank you for continuing to join me. Do drop the video a like if you're enjoying and subscribe to the channel to ensure you don't miss out on any further content. I'll accept just a straight one-year loan offer for Matt Miazga and a, a bit, whoa, a bit of £104 million for N'Golo Kante. Sorry, N'Golo Kante is one of the best central midfielders in world football still, so he will stay. Now, has the Matia de Silio says our Azpilicueta deal gone through yet? It hasn't. And what can I see here? Received offers. Uh, they presumably are agreeing. They're agreeing contract terms. It hasn't yet been hasn't yet been sorted, but Aspilicueta is currently in negotiations with Juventus for potentially a deal to move away. Well, I'll keep simulating, and once I have something to bring to you, I'll show you it. Matt Miazga gone out on loan to Everton. An offer of twenty one million pounds from Roma. For Michi Batshuayi, which I will accept straight off the bat. And we should, now that Azpilicueta has been sold, we should, now that that deal has gone through, have enough money to try and sign Kai Havertz as well. Reese James has been drafted in at a right back there, but is De Cilio higher rated? Ordinarily, I would have probably done it differently in a, in a main save, but for the sake of this mini-series and showing you what uh, career mode is like here, on FIFA 21. I've gone through with that deal. I could have got Chiellini. We've gone for De Giglio instead to improve at right back to ensure that we aren't left, we don't leave ourselves short there and actually maximise the amount of money we made from that as well. So now I have enough money to try and sign Kai Havertz before the start of the regular season. So let's go into. Well, are they interested in a loan? No. I'm not surprised, but we'll give it a go. We'll try and buy Kai Havertz then to bring him to the club as has been the case in real life. Probably going to have to pay more than Chelsea did in real life to bring Kai Havertz to Chelsea Football Club. But we shall offer a transfer fee and try... I could try a player swap. Are you interested in someone like Ross Barkley, perhaps? I've got so many central midfielders that I just don't need that many of them. I could maybe offer Timi Bakayoko. Barkley's slightly older, and I do have more attacking midfielders than, um, than defensive midfielders. So I'll keep Timmy at the club for now. We'll offer... Uh, 70 million, uh, 65 million plus Ross Barkley, and we'll see what they say to that. That's a total, total value of uh, 85 million. So, uh, or 86 million, 85 and a half. They've asked for Ross Barkley and 108 million, but they are interested in Ross Barkley, which is good news. So I'll offer them, I'll offer them 78 million pounds plus Ross Barkley. The sell-on clause, I'm not that bothered about. We're not going to be getting too far enough through the save. To warrant that actually coming into play, again they're turning down my uh, bids. So I will be quite, I will be quite aggressive here, and quite open to negotiation. But we'll go to 88, and they are going to accept 88 million plus Ross Barkley, Kai Havertz to come to the club. He's currently on 63,000 pounds a week. This could be absolutely brilliant for us. Kai Havertz to come in, then I can move Hakim Ziyech to the right hand side. We not even sold Willian yet. Can move Hakim Ziyech to the right-hand side of midfield on the wing. And then Kai Havertz can come in at Cam. And we will have ourselves a very tasty starting lineup here at Chelsea for the first game of the season against Manchester City of all teams. We'll accept that they don't want a release clause. That's completely fine. Now, tell me what you want, salary-wise. They haven't. Like I say, he's on 63. I'll give him a bit of a wage rise because he'll probably want, he'll probably want a bit of a wage boost. And a signing-on fee of £1.2 million. And we'll see if they'll accept that. Which indeed they do. A reasonable offer, he says. And Kai Havertz presumably has come straight in because it's the other way around. Or is Ross Barkley we still waiting to sign a contract with... No, he's in. Kai joins the club. There we go. Now I have, other than Malang Saar, a full... Uh, he is down as a right wing. That's weird. I'm not sure why it's uh, got the exclamation mark there because that is one of his positions that he can play. Uh, unless, perhaps, I have to go to his development plan. And if I'm going, to be fair, if I'm going to be using him as a, as a right winger, 
then I should really make his his primary I should really make his primary position right wing. Like, like I say, I am gonna have a more in-depth I changed player. I'm gonna have a more in-depth video on player position training, but you're gonna see me do it here. So to change him to a right winger is gonna take 23 weeks. But that is what I would like to do, because that's where I'm gonna utilize him more. So it's better to have him training and playing as a right winger and maximize his potential growth because he's playing in the right position. And then Kai Havertz can play at Cam. Right then, without any further transfer bids coming in or out, I will see you in the game against Manchester City. Mitch Batshuayi sold. Jorginho has had an offer come in for him from Bayern, but I'm not willing to let anyone else go really now other than Willian. Although, to be fair, I could potentially keep Willian for the time being to ensure that... Uh, we're able, that's, I'm going to manage my squad here because the sharpness for these guys is going down. So, oh, well, <laughs> speak of the devil, I've had a transfer bid for Willian from Spurs. Ugh, no. I'm not selling anyone to Spurs, thank you. I've got loose transfer settings set to this save right now. So, um, we, uh, we will get bids from rival clubs. If I were to have... Um, Strict transfer settings set to the uh, the save. Oh, now Atletico de Madrid are interested in buying Willian. Uh, they reckon I could only get a maximum of 25.4. I think for the sake of this save for the time being, obviously in real life he'll have gone, but for the sake of this save moving forward, now that I've been able to sell other players and still raise the cash for Havertz, I'll keep Willian and uh, maintain... Oh, they've offered me Conrad Lehmer as well as uh, some money. I'll keep Willian for the sake of squad depth for uh, all of the European football will be playing this season. So I'll actually take Willian off the transfer list now. Let me remove him from the transfer list. So all of our transfer business, incoming and outgoing with regards to permanent transfers, I believe, as far as I'm concerned, is now done. I'm not looking to do anything else. So we shall jump now to the game against Manchester City. My first press conference of the new season. Chelsea fans have been enjoying what they've been seeing from the team in pre-season. Can they expect more of the same once the serious games kick off? How's the atmosphere around the club? I tell you what, I'm very happy with what we've got here. A lot of people are talking about your team at the moment. Your supporters expect to see you qualify for the Champions League. Certainly, we have to qualify. We are Chelsea. We are a top four club. We should be qualifying. And then there's been some excitement around the club since we managed to sign Kai Havertz. Absolutely, he'll make the difference for us. He is one of the best young players in the world. So looking forward to getting uh, him in action. Let's head then to the first game of the competitive season. Will be the only game that we play in this episode today against Manchester City away from home. What a game to start the year. City's starting lineup then. Edison in goal. <coughs> Carl Walker, Laporte, Nicholas Otamendi and Benjamin Mendy. Fernandinho, Rodri and Kevin De Bruyne with Bernardo Silva, Sergio Aguero and Raheem Sterling as their front three. Mara's on the bench, Gabriel Jesus on the bench, David Silva, Joao Cancelo. Obviously, David Silva only there because this is an old database of players. He's left Manchester City in real life now. We're playing in our away kit, and uh, my starting lineup is as strong as it possibly could be. Kepa in goal, Matija Silio at right back, Thiago Silva, Rudiger, and Chilwell. Kante, Havertz, and Mateo Kovacic with Ziyech, Timo Werner, and Christian Pulisic as my front three. You might notice from a change in lighting, different recording session, but hopefully that doesn't stop me from being able to uh, play a decent game and get a decent result on Premier League opening day. Aguero to Bernardo Silva. Aguero made a great run. Thankfully, Rudiger read it and was there to step in. Now, I'm playing on default legendary. Ordinarily, on FIFA 20, obviously, we used some sliders on legendary to... Uh, to try and improve the overall performance of the AI. I obviously don't, as of yet, have the experience with the AI on FIFA 21 to know whether they are good enough on Legendary or not. And I, I'll be honest, I haven't tried Ultimate yet. I don't know if it's still as BS as it was last year with the boosted stats to AI players. So I'm not going to test that in this, uh, in this early build. I'm purely just going to play on default Legendary and then if I find it slightly too easy throughout the course of this hopefully full one season mini series then I'll uh, I'll put my FIFA 20 sliders back in but if I do that I will show you what those sliders are before we uh, just carry on so for now 
Don't worry about any slider settings for FIFA 21. As far as I'm aware right now, you don't need any. But we'll find out in due course if we do or don't. But Kai Havertz has gone off to a wonderful start. And after 17 minutes, Chelsea lead by a goal to nil. Okay, that's Kai Havertz's default celebration, apparently. Because I just pressed A. Uh, mm. All right. What a way to make an entrance to the Premier League, Kai. <laughs> Chelsea won, City nil. <laughs> Typical Chesnoy gaming goal. Midfield player running from deep. And then buries the finish on the overlap. Walk up. Back inside to Laporte. Rodri. A bit of footwork that was slightly unnecessary, but never mind. De Bruyne lets that run. Sterling back to De Bruyne, looking for Sterling through the gap. And that's a hell of a ball, as you might expect from Kevin De Bruyne. Wonderful possession play from him. Here's Sterling into Aguero. Ball roll and runs straight into Rudiger, thankfully. Get it across to Pulisic. And we could uh, we could attack City here. Pulisic trying to isolate Kyle Walker, although it's easier said than done when Walker's as fast as he is. But Kyle just kind of gave up on that. And that's to be 2-0. I'm going to change the difficulty. <laughs> Chelsea 2, Manchester City nil. Timo Werner has his first goal of the Premier League season. A goal on debut for two of our four, no, five. Chilwell, Thiago Silva, Kai, Werner and uh, Ziyech. Goal on debut for two of our five first-time debutants. So I've just added in my sliders from FIFA 20, which are as follows. Shot error to 38 on the CPU, pass error to 15. Uh, goalkeeper ability up to 60. Run frequency up to 60 and first touch control error down to 35. That's what has served me well over the course of multiple years and iterations of FIFA. So that's what I'm going to adjust the uh, legendary difficulty to for the remainder of this game. We'll see if that changes the way that the game has played so far. But certainly I feel the need to alter it in these opening stages of game number one. Of course, do bear in mind, of course, that this is an early build of the game and the... Everything gameplay specifically is subject to change between this build, which is a pretty old build, and the version that we'll get at launch. But there's a change, noted notably already, and City score themselves one back. That's why these slider settings have worked so well. Back in it, City. Out wide to Bernardo Silva. Forward looking for Aguero, but Rudiger cuts it out. That was supposed to go back to the keeper. But it, he tried to play it to his centre-back partner, and it's not worked. Aguero was in the way. Into Bernardo Silva. I'm all right with him on his right. It's if he gets on his left that I'm slightly concerned. He's got support back. I'm going to try and block any pullback, but he could go all the way at the near post. He's hit the near post, and it's spun across goal. I mean, I, I felt like I was quite happy with him to shoot from that angle, but he still nearly scored. <sighs> oh, look at that. He's come right short for free kick. The new, for the goal kick, new ruling, of course, that players are able to take a touch inside the box. That should have been introduced for FIFA 20, because that's when the rule was in place last season. But nice to see that reflected in the gameplay this year. Although, unfortunately, my football hasn't necessarily improved so far. Looks like it's going to be 2-1 to Chelsea at half-time. Thibaut Werner offered his services there by making a little bit of movement just to get away from the defender. Kovacic to Kante. Kai Havertz is through that gap. He left it for Werner. He'll play it back to Timo. He can get it back on his right foot. Ooh, but well held by Edison. That's the first shot we've had in the game that hasn't gone into the back of the net prior to that moment. Two shots, two goals for me. City have had two efforts, and one of them went in, and the other one very nearly did as well, with Bernardo Silva hitting the post. Oh, Sergio, calm down. What was that move? I, Sergio Aguero is turning into a monster, and I don't have... I don't have competitor mode turned on. This is just regular AI. But Aguero just ran me ragged there. That was unreal. Nice to see that not in competitor mode. Can De Bruyne... Or Bernardo Silva... No, Kevin De Bruyne equalised for City. No, he can't. Oh, hits the uh, support post there that gave a good old wobble. I don't think I've ever seen that happen in a FIFA game either. Some slight changes to the physics engine, evidently. Oh, it unfortunately cut just before contact was made. Here's Aguero. Really, 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 really worrying me with their footwork here. There is a new precision dribbling mechanic in the AI. 
or in the uh, gameplay engine. And I think that's what Aguero was making the most of there. It just makes the AI on this first game's experience that little bit less predictable with what they're going to do. Oh, good block by the defender as Kai Havertz is going to try and bend that home on his left foot. That's a lovely ball looking for Raheem Sterling. And Decilio's caught out of position. Sterling has got options here. One of which is Kevin De Bruyne. Little drag back. Oh, nice footwork. And Bernardo Silva equalises for City. Fantastic two goals from Manchester City here in this game. And David Silva, not Bernardo Silva, who's come off the bench here. David Silva scores the goal to equalise for Manchester City and they make it 2-2. Nice little drag back, good footwork and a lovely first time swept home finish. Again, to reiterate, especially with the uh, default ball, etc. and some of the boots. It's an early version of the game, so it's not final. David Silva won't be at Manchester City in uh, FIFA 21. Full launch and we will also have the licensed Premier League ball in FIFA 21, not this default one. Oh, disappointed to have lost my 2-0 lead, but at the same time... I don't mind because it means that, yes, the difficulty is definitely uh, where it should be with these slider settings on Legendary. I've certainly found it a lot more difficult since we made those changes to the sliders. Bernardo Silva shrugs me off here. They've pulled that back. And inside to Aguero. And Kepa holds on. Cross to Kovacic. Arriving is Chilwell. Inside is Timo Werner. It's a nice run by Kai. And he's slotted in well. And he's gotten a little bit lucky. Oh, tidy goal. We did get fortunate. Very much so. But we look like we might well have won it. Timo Werner and Kai Havertz, our two goal scorers, now working well together to give us the lead back again. I want to have a look at a replay of that. Kai Havertz got really lucky here as the ball broke off the defender and he sprinted free. And then I just tried to make some sort of pass as Edison leapt towards me. Thankfully, it found Timo Werner, who swept at home just under the foot of Nicolas Otamendi. And Timo Werner is delighted with that. His second goal of the Premier League season on his debut. I've made a change, or made two changes. I've brought Jorginho on for Kovacic. I've brought um, Callum Hudson-Odoi on for Havertz. Moved him to right wing and brought Hakim Ziyech central to Cam. They're the two changes I've made to try and, well... Initially, when I made them, hold on to a draw. Now, we're trying to hold on to a victory. And Kante, ever-present with a great interception to ensure that we hold on to our lead and keep it as we approach the final whistle. We'll spread it out wide here to hudson Adoy so he at least gets a touch before the end of the game. But only two minutes added on. And we could try and maybe even add another. Jorginho running out of room. Timo... Nice turn. Good save by Edison. Looking for a hat-trick and denied. Let's deliver this in towards the middle. Jorginho with the delivery. Up we go. It's going to be cleared away by City. But that will be three points for us on opening day. A difficult tie away from home at the Etihad. But we do pull through. We do pull through. Pleased to get three points to start the Premier League the right way. And also pleased that after kind of rolling to a 2-0 lead. Actually... Making those changes to the sliders made it a lot more difficult. And uh, I think, lads, if you were struggling last year with trying to find the right difficulty and you hadn't tried my sliders, I think that's evidence enough that they are pretty spot on for legendary difficulty. So that's where we'll end... Oh, transfer offer for Antonio Rudiger, which I will turn down. That's where we'll end today's episode. Uh, I will go and record uh, an, well as many as possible over, to come up over the next few days. To be fair... That Super Cup shouldn't be there, should it? If that's the European Super Cup, then, um, well, it shouldn't be there. That's last year's Super Cup, last season's. Obviously, in real life, that won't be there now because it was the season before last that Chelsea won the uh, Europa League and that Liverpool won the uh, Champions League. But presumably, this build was made before even this year's finals had even taken place because of... Uh, COVID, etc. So I will simulate that game as it's not one that will be there in real life. And then we'll play the other three, Leicester, Wolves and Southampton. And then moving forward, we'll do the play three, sim the rest for uh, the remainder of the season. And hopefully we'll be able to get a, uh, a, decent, a decent season in, a full season in, hopefully. 
Actually, to be fair, judging by the Champions League group there with Valencia and Ajax in it, I think it might just genuinely be last season's fixtures. Because it, it, Valencia, Lille, yeah, it's just genuinely last season's fixtures. So I'm almost playing through uh, last season on the new game. If that makes sense. But still, hopefully we can have a decent year at Chelsea and you guys will join me for it. Do drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Again, please subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on any more FIFA 21 content. Hit that notification bell and you definitely won't. And I'll see you next time.